We are going to be able to reduce fractions, they're called simplifying fractions. We're going to convert improper fractions to mixed numbers. Maybe back again, I don't think I was there though. And add and subtract and simplify fractions. So if you've forgotten about fractions, I'm going to review it for you. So we're going to turn the page and we are going to simplify our fractions. Well, why is divisibility important? That fraction can be reduced. And yes, I may have a calculator, but I mean, I could try numbers, but I do notice that they're both even. And maybe I can even think of a bigger number. We're looking for common factors. What's the biggest number you think you can think of that goes into 12 and 24? Now, some of you are good with fractions. You can write your answer down. I'm going to show my work because I want you to see something here. And this is divided by 4. What is this number? What's 4 divided by 4? 1. My philosophy is if you understand math, you'll remember how to do it. I'm not changing anything. I'm dividing by 1. That doesn't change the value. Now, I'm going to change how it looks. It's the same fraction. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Can you simplify that anymore? Can you reduce it anymore? Adeen? Put your phone away. Can you reduce that anymore? No. So you should write the problems down. <coughs> These are relatively prime. It's an expression saying there's nothing that divides into 3 and 5. It turns out they are prime numbers, but they don't have to be. Okay, what about 5 over 45? Divide by 5. I'm going to show my work. Because some of you just did the numerator, and that's wrong. You've got to do numerator and denominator. Nadine, put your phone away. What's 5 divided by 5? 1. 5 into 45 is 9. 9 is not a prime number. These are called relatively prime because there's nothing that goes in 1 and 9 besides 1 that lives. That is, we've reduced it. Well, the next one should be pretty easy. I don't have to do any work. What's 9 divided by 9? 1. This is the principle of multiplying or dividing by 1. How about 11 over 17? Can't do it. So it's done. Some of you had some problems with that, um, with square roots. You know, can you take the square root of 7? No. You just have to leave it. Is that okay? Are you okay with reducing fractions? It's a quick little lesson. Well, Simon's not necessarily quick. Equivalent fractions. Fractions that are simplified, but they have the same value. Those are equivalent. I want to write the word out. Equivalent. I'm even going to put a dash in there. There's not really one there, but I'm doing it. Because equa means equal, and equivalent means equal value. These have the same value. They have different names. So when women get married, not always, we change our names. We're still the same person. We still have the same value. It doesn't change. How we look name-wise is different. OK. I want to write some fractions that are equivalent to 1 tenth. Well, what you can do, because that is reduced, is we can multiply by 2 over 2. So that would be what? 2 Two times 10 is 20. What else would we multiply by? There's an infinite number of answers. Emily, what would you like to multiply by? 1 won't change it. What's your favorite number? 5. 5 works. 5 over what? Can you give me another one that will reduce to one tenth? So we have one tenth. You want to multiply by four over four? So that's four out of forty. Tomorrow we're going to multiply and divide fractions. Why do we care about this? Because we're going to do it eventually with letters. I'm hoping we can do that in this class. I don't know. What goes into five and fifteen? I'm going to reduce this because I can. 5, so I get 1 out of 3. Can you give me another fraction that's equal to 1 third? 
Now, you either can take 5 fifteenths and multiply it by something, or you can take the 1 third, which is easier. 1 third. What do you want to multiply by? 2. Or maybe you knew this. 2, 6. Got to get one more because it said 3, right? Just following directions. So I take 1 third times. Kennedy, do you have a favorite number? 3. So that gives me 3. Ninth. My favorite number is 29. But I don't want to multiply by 29 particularly. I didn't mind the 1 times 29, the 3 times 29. It means I have to do a little work. Okay, so you can find equivalent fractions. You either multiply or divide. This is still 1. No matter what you do, I'm multiplying or dividing by 1. Okay, now I want to do mixed numbers. And actually, before I do that, I might reduce it. Because I can reduce the first one. Now, the only reason I need mixed numbers is that I'm cooking or making something. Maybe I'm sewing. Then I have to know how I have to know what one and three quarters of a yard is. But in algebra, generally speaking, we leave them like that. But we're going to just practice doing this. Um, if I want to do slope, I would leave it 120 over 50. I want an improper fraction. Now, improper fractions means the numerator is bigger than the denominator. That's all it is. So it's a mixed number. But you know, before I do that, why don't we get rid of the zeros? Can I do that? Yeah, let's divide by 10. Now, I wouldn't normally write that out because, as I told my geometry students, I'm probably one of the oldest, I think I am the oldest teacher in the school. I've been here the longest, 35, I think I've been here the longest, 35 years. And back in the day, when I was in elementary school, we didn't have calculators. We didn't have calculators until I was a junior in college. So I had to memorize 1 through 25 and the squares of those numbers because we did everything by hand, or we used a slide rule. So we learn lots of little tricks. The little tricks are, if there's a 0 here and a 0 there, you really divide it by 10, and they cancel out. So I get 12 fifths. Now that's easier to handle. Now if you have a problem with changing that to a mixed number, think of it as being top heavy. And it's going to fall over. So it's going to be 5 into 12, because really, that's how many times we're talking about how many fives will be in 12. So if you're thinking about a pie, and it would be hard to divide it into five parts. But assuming you could divide it into five parts, you've got 12 of those. We have some whole pies there. How many whole pies are there? Five into 12 is how much? You know this. Two. What's well, two times five? Ten. And we have a remainder of 2. OK, so what does this mean? This means that I have two whole pies here, and I have two pieces left over. And I've divided the pie into five equal parts, which would be very tricky to do. That's a hard one to do. And that's what it is. Before I do 12 eighths, I would reduce it because it's easier. Or we don't have to. It falls over. 8 into 12. Now, if you need a calculator to do that, go ahead. The calculator is going to give you a decimal, unless you have one of my fancy calculators, and it will give you the fractions. So if you want to get a TI-84, it does do the fractions. You are going to need it for higher algebra. How many eights are there in 12? I cut my pie into eights. How many whole pies do I have? I have one. And I multiply one times eight. Remember long division? <laughs> okay. So you go 8 into 12 goes 1. I guess. It's a guess. It can't be 2 because 2 times 8 is 16. Too big. Then you multiply 1 times 8, and then you subtract. 12 minus 8 is what? Plus 12, take away 8. I have $12. I'm going to pay out 8. I'm still going to have $4 left over. And that's what I have. I have one whole pie, and I have four pieces out of 8. Because I divided the pi into eighths. Can I reduce that? Yeah, what is that? One and one. Yeah. Personally, I prefer to reduce these first. What do you guys want to do? Do you want to reduce them? There is no short way. <laughs> I think it's easier to reduce, but maybe it's not. Because you know, do you know how many times 30 goes into 62? You guess. 
and you want the biggest number possible. Now, I know there were some things you did, and I don't know if I know how to do it. Like if I guess too small. I'm going to guess once, then I multiply 30 out, and I have a remainder of 32. Guess what? That's still bigger than that. So my guess wasn't big enough. And just and what I do to make my guesses, I just look at this number and this number. How many times does 3 go into 6? Now, my guess might be too big, but I'm going to try it. 2. And 2 times 30 is 60 with a remainder of 2. That's right. 2 over 30. Some of you get it upside down, by the way. Can I reduce 2 thirtieths? What goes into 2 and 30? 2. Those are even numbers. I wish we did divisibility first because it makes more sense. So this is 1 and half of 30 is 15. Okay? This is number sense. Because when you go out in the real world, even if you're using a calculator, you still have to know if your answer is reasonable. And if I'm cooking or something like that, and if you double a recipe, we'll talk about multiplying tomorrow, then that's a problem. How about 26 tenths? It's going to fall over. 10 goes into 26. Well, I'm going to look at the first number. And 1 goes into two, 20, or 1 goes into 2 how many times? 2. Let's try that. 2 times 10 is 20. And then you subtract, Xavier, and what do you get? 26 minus 20 is 6. So it's 2 and 6 out of 10. If this number is bigger than that, I didn't guess big enough. Does that reduce? What goes into 6 and 10? 2, right? So I still have the whole part. And 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. If you need help with a calculator, use it. Now, the 84s will do the whole thing. All I have to do is type this into the calculator in 84. That has the, the, um, the software, the operating system with that, and it will just automatically give me 2 and 3 fifths. So if you have one of those, I'm okay with you using it. Just make sure, I want you to learn how to use it. Okay. I only, this is it. Adding, subtracting fractions. And this is the toughest thing. Yeah, I thought so. Is adding and subtracting these guys. Do you remember how to add and subtract fractions? Can I move that? Oh, she. It's not locked. Okay, I won't move it. Wait. That's better. <laughs> now, I like to do my fractions sideways, uh, uh, vertically. But before I add my fractions, I better make sure they're reduced. Otherwise, it's too hard. So this is 1 tenth. That's reduced. What about 5 fifteenths? Can I reduce that? Goes into 5 and 15. Jane? No, 3 doesn't go into 5. 5. Now, remember, our goal is always to get this stuff right. So if you have to write it down to get it right, write it down. Next year in geometry, you're going to need to write things down. So this is plus one-third. Now, I like to do mine this way, one-tenth. I don't care. I don't want to add these. Now, this is saying I have a pie. I cut it into ten pieces. I only have one. So this is a pie. I cut it into three pieces. I only have one. But what's true about the size of the pieces? If I have a pie and I cut it into ten pieces, if I can draw it, that's 8. Come on. Come on. Okay, 10 pieces. They're pretty little, right? What if I take a pie and I divide it into thirds? That one I can do. They're bigger. So how can you add these? I want everybody to think about it, because I know what you guys do. If you do it in calculus as well, they add the denominators. You can't. <coughs> you got to get the common denominator. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, you can multiply these two numbers together. I reduced it. So you can multiply the 10 and 3, and that will be the right number. But do you understand what's happening here? The size of the piece of pies are not the same, and you're counting up how many pieces you have. So you have to have them the same size. 
So we got to come up the same way. So I got to cut these tenths into even smaller pieces, and this one's a lot smaller pieces. What do three and ten go into? Thirty. So this is times three. What you do to the denominator, you must also do to the numerator. It's not fair if you don't. So this is three. This is hard. Multiplying divided is much easier. This is 30. 3 times what is 30? 10. Okay. And if you add that up, now, you're only adding, you're counting how many pieces. I have 3 from this pie, 10 from this one. That is this one here. It's a total of how many? I have 3 here, 10 there. I have 13 of them. What's the size of the pie, each piece? It's a 30th. This is really tiny. So it's kind of hard to do that. Let me see about it. Okay, let's see if that works. <laughs> okay, what about 2 thirds and 4 fifths? Now, if I reduce this first, most of the time I'm going to get a fraction that can, can't be reduced. I can't reduce that. 13 doesn't divide into 30. 13 only has two factors. It's prime, 1 and 13. Okay, so let's try this one, 2 thirds. I just think there's more room to work this way, but I don't care if you want to do it up here, you can. This is the way I do it. Now, you look at your denominators, which are 3 and 5. When in doubt, multiply them together, because that always works. Doesn't give you the least one. All the time, it will here. <clears throat> what do 3 and 5 divide into? Multiply them together. 15. When in doubt, so this is 3 times 5, and this is 5 times 3. I get 15 either way, don't I? Okay, what number has to be up here times what? 3 times 5, 2 times 5. It's got to be the same. And when I do this, 3 times 4 is, oh, now what I'm going to do is add these. I'm going to add how many pieces. That's the top number. So how many do I get there? 10 and 12 is 22. And the size of the piece of pie is 15. And normally I would just leave that because that's a fine answer, but we're going to, re we're going to um, change it to a mixed number. So I'm going to take 15 into 22. Well, 15 is pretty big. If I take two of them, I'm up at 30. So let's just try one. Now, if you need a calculator, use one. I'm going to borrow one from the two. That makes it 12 minus 5, which is, anybody know? Why am I good at this? Because I've never used a calculator. What's 12 take away 5? 7. You need to be able to do that, because if you're checking out something in the store, you need to make sure you're getting the right change. And you're not going to whip your calculator out and double check somebody. You do have to do some mental math. So this is 1 and 7 fifteenths. As you get older, you'll realize I'm right. Okay, I'm going to move these here. Okay. The subtracting um, is the same. It's harder if we get to uh, mixed numbers. This isn't going to be bad, though. There, now I can slide these guys. Okay. 7 twelfths minus 1 third. Xavier, do you know what, the, what a common denominator is? When in doubt, multiply them together. This is a smaller one, though. Both of them will go into 36. 12 won't go into 3. Bigger. 36 would work. Let's do that. What happens if you take the one that's too big? That's fine. Correct, but if you don't see it, the common denominator could be 12, the smallest 12. 24 also works. 36 works. There's a number of infinite possibilities. But when in doubt, multiply we'll them together. You're tired. You're now shoveling the snow. You don't want to think. So I'm just going to multiply 12 times 3. I will have to reduce. That's the only problem. This is 21. Let's make this 36, so this would be 3 times 12. And then make sure you do your arithmetic. It's subtraction. <clears throat> 
What's 21 minus 12? You're just going to subtract these guys. 21, take away 12. You're going to borrow 1. That's 11 minus 12. 9. Can you reduce that? Some of you got there a different way. It's just fine. Yes. Divide by 9. The only problem with taking any multiple of one bigger than the least common multiple is that you'll have to reduce. That's all. What's 9 divided by 9? 36 divided by 9. 4. That's it. Okay, I'm going to have you guys try this one. I'm going to get it set up. 1 6 minus 2 ninths. This is a little harder to find the common denominator, but when in doubt, multiply them together. What number is guaranteed to work? That's 6 times 9. Do I need to teach you the 9s in your fingers? 54. There's a smaller one. But you know what? If I don't know, try 54. I'm going to pause this and then come around and help me with it. And then 18 is smaller, yeah. So some of you will use 18. Some of you use a... F okay, this is an interesting problem because if I make this 54, this is times 6, always works. And then this one is times 9. Now, what's 9 take away 12? Now, in the real world, I don't run into this situation. I can't remember when I've run into the situation. Hopefully we won't have that. But 9 take away 12 is a negative 3 out of 54. Does 3 go into 54? Yeah. Negative 1. Do you know how many times, Max? 18. Now, why do I know that? I don't really know that. I just saw you guys work. So I go, mm, must be 118. <laughs> okay, so that's what we're doing today. And there is, if you go on Schoology, somewhere. And if you go under here to number sense, and it says homework, we're doing day one. So you know that you're going to be gone on a trip, and you're going to miss these. Well, guess what? They're there. Now, if you just give me a second, I'll run down and see if my copies are there. OK? Yeah, you can see what's in the basket. I'm literally out. I know.